Hi, my name is Steve Rahi. I'm a customer engineer focused on management technologies. Today's discussion is part four of an ongoing series focused on endpoint protection in Microsoft Intune, which of course is part of Microsoft Endpoint Manager. Today's session is focused on discussing and understanding security baselines that you can deliver and use uh, through, um, through Intune. So our agenda for this session, just really to detail what security baselines really are, why we care about them, and then we'll talk about uh, some requirements, basically show how they work, give you some scenarios. I'll talk about how you would go about configuring, and then we will start to wrap up with troubleshooting tips and tricks and so on. I'll tell you that this session is going to be a little bit, a little, little bit different than some that I typically do because oftentimes uh, I will configure the setting and then show it to you applied to the device and that's not what I'm going to do today. This one is an important discussion for sure. Um, but basically, and I'll maybe say this a couple of times, the settings that you're going to see here are ones that you can actually deliver elsewhere. And so I want to really talk about and focus on the concept of security baselines versus actually deploying these because deploying them again can happen in a couple of, of different uh, arenas. Right. So, you know, the other thing too to kind of start the discussion here is to really understand why, why are we talking about this? And, and what I'm about to say really is true for any discussions, you know, that we have, but, but I kind of highlight it and raise it more in, in the discussion here because uh, when we're talking about endpoint protection, we're talking about security, usually that's going to be uh, another team inside an organization that actually manages such settings. Uh, versus the, um, the 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 manageability team, Intune, Config Manager, whatever. And so to highlight, first of all, for awareness, these are capabilities managing, deploying, uh, using these settings are, are capabilities you have. And so being aware of them uh, has value in and of itself. They're built in capabilities to your management tool, uh, to Windows 10, you know, in this case, that you might want to leverage for uh, your environment. Uh, there might be some um, uh, interesting scenarios where role-based access control uh, can help you carve out a management experience for your security professionals that lets them focus on just what they need to deliver uh, for their purposes out of uh, the management uh, capabilities we have. So, so understand the, the focus of this session is not to talk about um, in, in great, great detail, security baselines. Certainly that is a, a, a topic that, that merits, you know, digging into and so on. More this session is focused on showing you how you can leverage uh, Intune, uh, the MDM management of, of your Windows 10 devices to deploy these baselines and assess them uh, in your environment, right? Okay, so that said, what are these things called security baselines? Well, put simply, these security baselines are pre-configured Windows settings. They're really broken down into three categories. Who knows, we might expand them going forward. Don't know, right? But for now, there's three uh, that are available in, uh, in the Endpoint Manager console, the Intune console, to deploy against uh, Windows 10. That would be the Windows 10 baseline, also known as the MDM uh, baseline. There's one for Microsoft Defender for Endpoint, uh, and then there's one for uh, Microsoft Edge, right? So one thing to understand about these baselines, a couple of things actually, these baselines that are available through uh, Intune, through the MDM channel, these are the ones that would apply to Windows 10. The idea of security baselines, kind of um, jumping ahead a little bit, I have rebranded security configuration and analysis, right? So security baselines have been around for a while. Um, in fact, in the, the early days of Configuration Manager compliance settings, that was introduced, I believe, if I remember right, it's been a long time, in Configuration Manager 2007. Uh, in, in, those, in that time frame, there was a tool, and, and you can still find it, called the Security Configuration and Analysis Tool. And what that really had value and still does is the uh, security baselines that were made available in this tool uh, basically generated by Microsoft, Microsoft IT, uh, partners, and so on, that really described 
hey, if you're running Windows Server 2012 or 2008 or Windows 7 or any of our uh, OSs and maybe some applications on those OSs. So here's what we believe you should have those, uh, uh, those systems configured uh, to match, right? These are the configurations we would recommend and others would recommend. And so uh, that tool often was uh, used as, as even a learning tool for how to deliver such settings through compliance settings. In fact, you could export and import uh, those settings from security configuration analysis into config manager compliance settings, right? So again, not to get off too far on the tangent, just saying these have been around for a while. Certainly security baselines are more than just the three that you see here, right? Uh, these are the three that you can deliver uh, from Intune. But the whole idea of security baselines uh, is uh, is huge, right? So, and again, what are these? They are basically a group of Microsoft recommended configuration settings that explain uh, security impact and how things uh, should be configured. These are based on feedback from Microsoft security engineering teams, the product groups, partners, customers, and, and these do change from time to time, as you will see, right? As new features are added, as features are taken away, as uh, things are uh, removed and so on. So, so understand that I, I'm talking about the security baselines in Intune for Windows 10. This is a much bigger topic and your security folks should be aware of these baselines to at least understand what's being recommended. Not to say that you have to take our recommendation in every case, no but to see what's being recommended, why it's being recommended, and, uh, and apply that or, or compare that to what you have in your own environment, right? And you'll see that more uh, as we go along. Last thing, so these security baselines are really nothing more than a combination of settings that you could figure out yourself and could deploy yourself through configuration profiles, right? Th this is one of the reasons that I'm really not digging into this to the point of deploying it and so on, because these are really nothing more than configuration profiles that we combine and show you how to set uh, in a recommended way uh, in, in a separate section uh, of the console. But you could, you could do this yourself in configuration profiles, uh, no problem. Which actually, here comes another tangent. Y'all know I'm famous for tangents, right? Um, you know, one question I've heard raised about this uh, before is, Hey, well, we can if we can set this in multiple areas of the console. What happens if people set them in uh, conflicting areas of the console? And that's absolutely a great question, right? And so there would need to be some strategy around that to make sure that um, that we avoid that. Where which is where role-based access control again could come in uh, as a, a good way to help you focus what capabilities are available to certain groups of people and not others, right? Anyway, so we could spend a whole lot of time on that too, but just wanted to address it in case it was on uh, your mind. So why do we care about these security uh, baselines? Well, certainly, you know, as we've already talked about, these are built in capabilities to your management tool. You can use them. They are recommendations from uh, security experts, from Microsoft, the people that built the software, the product group, you know, so on, right? These are very focused uh, recommendations um, that will help you assess your configurations against what is being recommended. So in case it's not already clear, uh, in most cases, when you are choosing to configure a setting through, uh, through Intune or really any product config manager, whatever, it's up to you, right? It's a blank slate. We don't tell you how to configure it. That's not true with baselines. You can certainly not take our recommendation, but with baselines, these settings are going to be pre-configured for you. And then you can opt out of that or choose to use them or whatever, right? So yes, these can be configured through configuration profiles, but then you will have to configure each setting. Whereas here, we combine the relevant ones together and show you how we recommend configuring them. And it's up to you to take that, alter that, whatever you want to do, right? Uh, security baselines allow you to enforce at least a basic set of settings across all of the device uh, types or all, all of the pro, uh, baseline types in your uh, enterprise. Again, you don't have to take our recommendations, certainly review them. You don't have to take them. You can customize and apply what you uh, would like to. 
And certainly then security baselines give you that level of consistency for new devices that are uh, maybe being brought on board uh, and so forth, right? So what are the requirements to use security baselines? Well, there's a few. You need Intune. This will be delivered through MDM, right? You need a supported Windows 10. Hear that? Windows 10. Again, I'm calling Windows 10 out because Windows 10 is what we manage with Intune through the MDM channel. That does not mean that these security baselines are limited to Windows 10. There are security baselines for all of our OSs, right? Um, and, and there's other configurations too. But for specifically Intune, you need Windows 10 1809 or better. And then you need groups where you will assign uh, the security baseline. Now, some of our configurations, um, such as uh, what we talked about in part three, firewall uh, policies, those will be applied, generally speaking, to groups as well, the exception being tenant attached. Those will be applied to collections, but they will be applied to groups of devices, right? There are some settings that are applied to groups of users, and there are some settings like this where you could apply them just as equally to devices or users, right? So you need groups of devices or users, whichever makes more sense in your environment, to apply these security baselines. Uh, against. Okay, and there's a few scenarios where you might want to apply uh, these security best ba uh, baselines. So the first one, best practice review. So this would be a situation where um, you understand that a security baseline includes the best practices, the recommendations that would impact security. Uh, those recommendations come from, again, partners, our security teams, our product groups, even looking at um, uh, things that we have in baselines historically that were applied through group policy, right? And and just see what we recommend, how you compare to what we recommend, what your differences are, and understanding why you're doing those differences, and and so on, right? Huge learning tool, um, both for best practice review and even to understand what we can configure through um, through MDM onto these Windows 10 devices. Another, new to Intune. So you might be completely new to Intune. You're not even sure where to start. You're on that journey. You want to start in a way that's, that, that, that edges toward consistency and having devices that are enrolled uh, be set up in a way that um, th that's agreed to with the security team. Uh, and, and so baselines are a great way to start, you can quickly create and deploy uh, these profiles, and then as you get more experience, you can adjust them, you can um, tweak them, whatever, but from the beginning, you're helping protect uh, your environment. Or thirdly, which is something everyone on the uh, modernization journey will go through, and that's transitioning from group policy. So you might currently use group policy um, for deploying these security baseline you know, type settings. And so Intune is a MDM mechanism to allow you to deploy these baselines as well, right? Uh, for Windows 10 devices. And so this might help you in the transition from uh, on-prem group policy to uh, moving toward more of a modernization strategy in the cloud, right? So cool. Now, how does this actually work? So again, here's where it's a little bit different in this session, because typically when I say how it works, um, I'm going to go and show you basically a diagram uh, pull with arrows pointing different places and a flowchart kind of thing. Not really here, right? But I want to highlight this in terms of how it works uh, with baselines. And, and here's the point. Baselines are not something we release and forget about baselines will evolve over time. They will be revised over time to match whatever new conditions we have encountered, recommendations that we've uh, adopted, any new features that have been uh, added or features that have been uh, deprecated, they will be occasionally uh, revised. When a new version of a baseline is released, then understand there are impacts to your environment. So the settings in the existing baselines, any of them that you have created, they don't go away, but they become read-only. You can still use them. You can still keep them assigned and deployed to your devices, but you can no longer edit the specific settings because they are now considered 
legacy uh, legacy settings, and we have replaced those with newer uh, recommendations. So uh, you don't have to move to those newer recommendations right away, but the idea is you'll review those and determine, okay, hey, this makes sense. I understand what's going on with the settings and so on, uh, and start to begin the process of planning to uh, implement your own revision based on uh, the baseline that we have released, right? So some examples of that uh, would be here. Here are the three baselines, and the revisions will show you when, when we have revised these security baselines. So the last revision to any of them was in 2020. Uh, as I record this session, it's April of 2021. So, you know, I would expect at some point, not too far in the future, that we will have revisions uh, of these baselines uh, again. And I'll show you when I get into the console, how you would work with um, uh, revi or, or using the revised baselines when they do uh, show up, right? And so without further ado, let's actually get into the console and talk about configuring these baselines. So here on the overview page for, uh, for the Endpoint Manager console, we're gonna go to Endpoint Security. And then once we get to Endpoint Security, as soon as it lets me, um, we will look at, uh, come on, we will look at the, uh, the security baselines. There we go. So if we go down then to security baselines, you're going to see uh, the three categories that I referenced. Man, this is not clicking fastly for me. Go. Okay, go. There we go. All right, cool. So here are the three security baseline groups. You see that I have one uh, security baseline configured in each category. You can have more than one if it makes sense. This is my lab, and so it doesn't make a whole lot of sense for me to do more than one. Uh, you can see what versions these are. So if I go revise, then we'll track the version. You'll see the last time they were published and so on. So I'll go through these step by step. So the Windows 10 security baseline is actually called the MDM security baseline as well. You'll see what baseline, uh, what uh, default baseline this is based on, right? So as I mentioned, we will revise these baselines periodically. Now, when I started putting the session together, um, I didn't have any previous baseline. So the only baseline I could create was based on December 2020 release. But if I'd had baselines created based on previous releases, I could still see them here. Again, I could still work with them here. But anything new that I, I create is going to be based on the current security baseline version and not any, I have no option to create something based on a past security baseline version at all. But imagine if I had five or six different baselines here, some updated to the current version, some not updated to the current version, we could tell here. Also, uh, say that we release, just picking a date that is complete fiction as far as I know, um, August of 2021, we release a new security baseline. Well, maybe I like this baseline. And so what I want to do is just duplicate it and now apply it with the new settings or you know whatever. Maybe I delete it and start over, don't know, but um, that's out there, right? Now, here, here's another consideration, right? So we give you the baseline settings. And so you will always be able to create your own set. So if I were to go in, let me show you, if I want to go in and create a profile, and maybe I want to call this uh, default baseline settings. So I always have a version of default. Well, you always really do because your baseline security settings are gonna be set based on whatever you pull out. So consider this your default. So anything you build and customize, you can always go compare back to the default, but maybe you just want to have in your face uh, the default settings. You could create that, make no other changes and save it. And now you've created a default list of settings based on our recommendations in December uh, 2020, right? Hopefully this all uh, makes sense. So let's go look specifically at what those recommended settings are. And again, I've not deployed this. I'm not going to deploy this. I'm just showing you um, what the options are. And, and I'm not even really gonna go into the settings specifically except to unpack them and let you see quickly you know, what's there because you can go through and look at the recommendations with a finer tooth comb 
uh, so to speak, than, than I will. So let me first, I'm going to take a moment. You'll see the, the different settings groups that are out here, right? And so I want to show you that. Um, and let me just go expand each one of these temporarily and let it build, and then we can just scroll up and down. Again, I'm not going to go into any detail on any of them except to show them to you. But uh, I'll also remind you here. So I mentioned that these are settings that you could set uh, with device configuration profiles, and you absolutely can. Each one of these you could configure with device configuration profiles. But here, we just combine them for you in a way that hopefully uh, gives you a better uh, ability to kind of bring together settings that um, kind of make sense as you look at them uh, together. Okay. Uh, you can tell there's a lot of them for this one. And they're all expanding currently. Let's uh, go on up and do a few more, hopefully. And this will be the end of it. All right. All right, good enough. So I'm just going to scroll up and down. Again, I'm not going to talk about any of these specifically, but if you want to pause the video where I'm scrolling up and down, you'll see here's the above lock settings, the app runtime settings, application management, you have audit settings that you can implement. And you see that they are configured. These are not just empty configurations. They are configured the way that we would recommend autoplay settings, your BitLocker settings uh, that are out there, uh, browser settings, your connectivity settings, uh, credential delegation, cr credentials UI, uh, your data protection settings, device guard settings, uh, device installation uh, settings, device lock settings, right? On we go, DMA guard, event log, uh, settings, experience settings, file explorer settings, firewall settings. And, and we, in a previous session, part three, we just talked about firewall settings. And so here you see them again. Um, again, the idea that we just bring together settings that we believe make sense for defining a baseline. Internet Explorer uh, settings and how these are recommended uh, to be configured. And then on we go. There's a lot of them here, as you might imagine. So let's keep going. And then, let's see, we get past Internet Explorer. Come on, let's get past Internet Explorer. Okay. Did I mention there's a lot of Internet Explorer settings? There are. Okay, cool. So local policies options. Um, different uh, detail that we can set for Defender. Right? And then uh, moving on down to... Um, uh, Microsoft Security uh, Guide and MSS Legacy Detail and pro uh, Power and Remote Assistance and Remote Desktop and Remote uh, Management and then we get into Remote Procedure Call and Search and Smart Screen and System and uh, Wi-Fi and then Windows Connection Manager and Windows Inc and PowerShell and that's it for these. Now that's a lot of settings, right? But again, these are recommendations. Look at these compared to what you have uh, in your environment, right? So, so that's Windows 10 uh, OS settings, again, called MDM uh, settings here uh, is another way that this is referred to as well. So let's go back and look at the others. So here's the uh, Windows Defender for endpoint uh, settings that we can look at. Same discussion that we just had applies to this in terms of having uh, the standards and uh, if you want to create uh, your own set of uh, placeholders, if you will, that define the default. So let me dig into that a little bit more. I mentioned that these are revised from time to time, right? So as soon as we're re we have a revision, a new revision out there, you can no longer see the settings that were defined in the previous revision unless you happen to have a custom policy based on that. So maybe you want to keep track of the changes and you want to make sure that you have your uh, security base, some, you know, maybe, again, picking some numbers. Maybe we, re you, you, we release uh, the Windows 10 uh, current baseline settings in December 2020, and then we release the next one in August 2021. You don't want your ability to see the recommendations in December 2020 to go away. So you'll build just an unassigned 
default baseline based on 2020. That way, when the 2021 recommendations come out, you can still access the 2020 settings and see them. I can't change them, but you can certainly see them uh, and, and do a comparison of what changed a little bit, maybe more easily. Again, won't belabor that point. But here's the settings for uh, what we recommend with uh, Defender specifically. What you're going to find out here is that there, even within baselines, there can be uh, policies that live in multiple places. Like, let's scroll down. Hey, BitLocker. BitLocker exists over in Windows 10, and it exists here. And if you look at Windows 10, uh, it's going to present different options than here, right? So my point is, if you are using BitLocker and you are you know, want, trying to see what our recommendations are, don't just stop with the Windows 10. Go look at the Defender as well. Here's Firewall. Firewall was over on Windows 10 as well. Uh, it's over on the Defender baseline. And what you'll find sometimes is that you might even have different settings, such as in the case of BitLocker, and you might have different recommendations based on the baseline you're using. So that's where you want to, again, see what the, uh, the, the differences are in those settings, how you're applying them, where you're applying them. Uh, maybe when the, uh, just to throw one out, maybe the Defender baseline was updated more recently than Windows 10, and so maybe something changed in BitLocker. I, maybe, I don't know, right? But this is where you get in and look at the baselines as they change, as they have different settings. So uh, specifically on Defender, we have attack surface reduction. Uh, then we have BitLocker settings. And then we have uh, device guard and device uh, installation uh, details. And then we have uh, DMA guard and firewall uh, settings that we recommend. And then we have um, uh, Defender you know, detail. And then on we go, smart screen and, and so on, right? So Again, not getting into the specific recommendations, that's up to you. But I just want to show you uh, that these are here. Um, okay. Now, last one then is going to be uh, for uh, Edge. So a lot of folks I know are actually deploying this uh, now. A few customers that I know for sure are deploying these settings and coming up with settings now. So what better time to look at a baseline than now, right? And so same thing, if we go look at these settings that we recommend, configuration settings, then this is what's, what you're going to see, is all of these settings for, uh, for Edge, right? So take a look at them. Uh, this is what security baselines really are. Again, I'm not showing you uh, the detail about these in action because really that's not the point of this. It's more making you familiar with baselines. So as we start to wrap this up, uh, in terms of troubleshooting tips and tricks, right? So standard troubleshooting will apply. I'm not really getting into that here because that's not really the purpose of this session. Um, these are, again, just standard uh, configuration profiles. So the, the same kind of mechanisms that you would use to, to troubleshoot configuration profiles really would uh, apply here. In terms of uh, tips and tricks, so separate... Uh, Baseline type, sorry, separate baseline types again can include, you saw, uh, the same settings um, with different actual configurations. So be sure you're aware of that. Avoid conflicts. So that means, you know, as you have uh, configurations in your environment, uh, you can deploy these things through security baselines, your customized versions of security baselines. You can also deploy them through configuration profiles. So there immediately is the potential for conflict. The different settings that exist in common between security baselines, there's the potential for conflict. So make sure you approach this and, and know what you're doing and maybe decide, hey, we're going to set BitLocker here, but not over here, or whatever the case may be, right? We'll help you see uh, when conflicts arise um, in the uh, uh, results of the per setting you know, touch status and so on, um, that, that will help elevate that. So one question that sometimes comes up is, are these security baselines compliant with uh, NIST standards, you know, as an example, or CIS standards as an example? And the answer is no, these are not CIS or NIST compliant. However, these agencies are uh, consulted as we develop uh, 
these recommendations, right? So again, these are here for you to evaluate what our best practice recommendations are, uh, take a look at them, uh, configure them appropriately for your environment. Um, and this, just consider this to be a helpful tool along the way to making sure you are consistent and as secure as possible. So that said, we will wrap the session here and we will see you next time.